doing something. Okay. <laughs> Hi, folks, and welcome to our series at PATH, Let's Talk Careers. Um, just so that those of you who are not familiar with the series, the purpose of uh, these interviews that we host is to learn more about different occupations. So as we le listen to each one of our guests, they each have a special perspective of their personal career journeys that, that they share with us. Many of, many of you out there may be thinking of ideas and um, advice for getting into a certain type of career or just wanna hear more about uh, someone's personal journey. So that's the opportunity that we're hosting these for you. Um, today, I wanna to welcome our guest, Evelyn Zaya. Thank you, Evelyn, so much for joining us today. I appreciate you coming. Thank you so much, Catherine. I was a little bit nervous, but I know you, so that puts me at ease a little bit. So. <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier. It's just you and me talking. If other people are watching, well, uh, that's awesome too. So, yep. Yep. so um, I thought I would start off the conversation just to ask about your maybe your very first job or maybe your very your favorite job. Okay, so maybe I'll start for my very first job. So my very first job was actually as a hairdresser. <laughs> uh, I completed my training and landed a great job here in Hamilton uh, at a big hair uh, hair salon in Upper James, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that job really helped me build on some skills like time management, communication skills, uh, my customer service skills, uh, and it built my self-confidence uh, and it really enhanced the creative side of of who I am. So mm -hmm. yeah, so I was a hairdresser for many years until I went into retail and sales management. So that was a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yep. For sure. But they say to I mean, that's kind of the strategy, they say you need to try retail. Um, um, and as well as restaurants, things like that, it just gives you a good feel of is this what you want to do? Or is this not what you want to do? And you do gain a lot of skills from these type of jobs, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So who would you say was the biggest influence in your life? Do you have uh, some well, for me, I think my kids and my family was the biggest influence mm -hmm. on what I want to do in the future. So um, I guess you can say uh, building my confidence was a really important thing for me and building my kids' confidence in my family. So mm -hmm. um it allowed me to be more comfortable into going in different jobs. Um, and this is when I realized where I can take the passion of helping other people with mm -hmm. my leadership skills, uh, my knowledge when I went to school for social service work and uh, my hands-on experience. So that really helped me kind of come together and um, be able to support, support my community and the people in it. But my biggest influence would be my family for sure. Um, awesome. And the women in my life that I've seen uh, that have tried new things and, and, and been really creative in the community. So yeah, the women in my life too. Yep. And so what, what is your present job, Evelyn? What do you do right now? So right now I'm currently an employment counselor and job developer with the Opportunities Program with uh, YWCA Hamilton. Um, so the top program is an employment and training program for individuals that self-identify with a disability. Um, we provide um, assistance information for job seekers in all aspects of employment search and career planning. Uh, it's basically a 10 week training, employment training that includes certifications such as AODA, health and safety, customer service excellence, and mm -hmm. so much more. Um, I've been in this role for about a year now. Like we said, we start, I started the first day of the pandemic last year. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's been interesting. Uh, but I'm loving every minute of it, and I've learned so much in this position, um, and it, may, it got me connecting with individuals like yourself, so mm -hmm. really, really exciting. Yeah, there's quite a community uh, rallying around these types of services, so, and we all, even if we are all providing the same type of service working together, um, we just complement one another, and it just it really does work. I mean, Hamilton is very lucky for the types of services that we have out there. So again, I'm, I'm thrilled as well to be a part of this community. It's, uh, it, we're doing well. I mean, despite pandemic and, and the complications, because there, you know, there's a lot of turmoil out there. Um, we're still able to get 
folks, especially those that identify as having a disability into the job force, into, you know, feeling like they, you know, like are contributing to, to something that they want to be doing. So it's, uh, it's very rewarding. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree with that. So you said that um, you, you, so you went to school for social services. Is that what steered you into this type of work? Um, into the employment side of it? Or did you just kind of fall into it? How did you find your way into this? So most of my life, I worked in retail, like I said, in sales and um, held uh, management positions, but I felt like something was still missing in my life. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to get involved in the community. So I started volunteering, just like how we tell our clients, if you want to look yeah. into a job, you start volunteering, you start mm -hmm. uh, creating those connections and finding them out about the job field a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I volunteered with the Hamilton Women's Center and I received my peer support counselor uh, certification and mm -hmm. I was able to work with a few women that amazing women out there and I was able to support them and provide resources. So and then after that, I also tried um, volunteering at Interval House, the women's oh. shelter uh, mm -hmm. in Hamilton also. And that was an amazing experience. So it kind of gave me a little insight of where I want to go. So mm -hmm. I decided that. 30s, not to share my age, but at 37 years old, I decided to go back to school uh -huh. and enroll in the social service work program with Mohawk College. Um, nice. My first placement was at Mohawk College in the CIC program. Oh, okay. uh, this is this is a program. It's uh, in um, CIC's um, uh, uh, Community Integration Through Cooperative Education. That's what it uh, stands for. And it's a two year program for students with uh, disabilities. And Catherine, I have to tell you, the first day of my placement, I fell in love and I was, I said to myself, this is, this is my calling and this is where I'm supposed to be. So that kind of just helped me find my way for sure, working with people with disabilities. Yeah, sometimes it's just by chance, right? That you find that path, like you have the passion there, you just, what do I do with it? So you yep. look, you try, and sometimes it just falls into your lap and you know, I mean, we're, we're lucky, right? If that, yep. that does happen. So, yeah. And those are the so, best jobs, the ones that fall in your lap without oh, yeah, you looking. I know. I find or you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody yep. who helps you get into that, you know, falling on your lap part. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for sure. So what would you say is your best quality that makes you good at the job that you do? So I would say, I guess you can say that I'm really passionate about what I do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm an advocate for individuals with special abilities. Um, I love sharing resources and connecting with people. I uh, enjoy communicating and also educating individuals in my community. Um, plus my background in sales and customer service really comes in handy when I'm trying to connect with employers and yeah. advocating for our clients and trying to get those jobs for our clients for sure. Yep. That's awesome. In the, the pandemic, you so you said you've been working the whole time at home. I guess, I, I, I guess since you don't have a before picture of what this was like, this is your norm. This is you know how you've been working. Have you? I don't know how how to even word this question of like how how you have handled. Have you noticed um, struggles in that with the pandemic with you know, the situation that you're like the job that you're in right now? Well, yeah, for sure. I think COVID has affected so many of us in so many different ways, it, whether it's financial, um, whether it's mental health, whether it's self-esteem and self-confidence to go mm -hmm. out and look for those jobs and be able to uh, uh, feel safe when you're looking for those jobs, right? So obviously locating jobs for our clients has been a little bit challenging, but due mm -hmm. to the closures and lockdowns and Every few months, there's something that, you know, comes in that's different, but um, we just keep on working hard, preparing our clients, perfecting mm -hmm. those resumes and creating mm -hmm. great connections with employers and trying to really support our small businesses in the community. And yeah. just by staying positive and staying resilient, I think uh, we just kind of keep going. And uh, we have some clients that um, are still looking for job opportunities, but you know what? We meet with them every week. We connect with them and and we try to help them as best as we can through this time. Yeah. Yeah. It's all we can do. Right. I mean, just try to be there and be present and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, help them, you know, sometimes it's, it's a long process to get somebody yeah. to the point of a job. There's a lot of steps involved. So as long as we're on a good track and on, you know, a track that they're happy with, 
I mean, we're still doing a good job out there. Right. Yep. Is there any piece of advice you would give your younger self? My younger self. Okay. So, <laughs> so I have so many things that I'd like to share with my younger self, but uh, the most important thing I would say would be just to keep going, keep uh -huh. learning and keep trying. Yep. Okay. So I would, I would suggest to my younger self to keep being your uh, creative self, be yourself uh -huh. and uh, create opportunities, uh, learning opportunities for yourself. That's what I would say. Um, and uh, take a chance. Don't be afraid. A failing. And that's something uh -huh. that we share with our clients too, right? You got to take a chance sometimes in different uh -huh. jobs, different career paths, different areas for you to know what you want to do, just like how I did in the beginning. Yeah. 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 The job that you start in is not necessarily the same type of job or field that you will end up with for the rest of your life. Yeah, you know, some, sure. some, I can, you can say that maybe they're lucky they're in the job for 20 years, but not necessarily. Maybe they're not really happy. They just don't know how to you know, backtrack out of that and, and get into something maybe they're more passionate about or, or they can't, you know, financially or whatever, whatever reason. So, yeah. And, and to add to that, just trying to find out what you love to do and just go uh -huh. with that. Right. Yep. Because yeah. if you love connecting with people and helping people and a lot of our clients will say, I want to help people. Uh -huh. So uh, that's one of the things that we look at too, when they're looking for a job. So, but you can help people in different ways. So it just depends uh -huh. what, what your path takes you on. Yep. Yeah, maybe that's only a piece of your job, or maybe that's a part of your, your volunteering part of not part yep. of your job. So you can complement it with those type of things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, your the opportunities program, what, um, what does that look like to get into um, to get into for somebody if somebody was asking about that for like to to join that for, for to join that? Yeah. So in order to get to the opportunities program, um, we would send a form to our client, uh, an application mm -hmm. form, and there is a couple of requirements. Um, you have to be over the age of 16, which I have to say we haven't had anybody at the age of 16. Usually they're 18 mm -hmm. and over. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to self-identify with a disability. Um, and you have to be eligible to work in Canada, of course. Uh, so we would take that information. We would send it to our manager and funder for approval. And uh -huh. as long as you're approved, you're, you're in, basically. And we usually have a certain number that we take in, usually from seven to eight clients, just depending on the uh, cohort. But um, yeah, it's 10 weeks of uh, about three days of training, employment training. We connect with many organizations such as Path Employment for mm -hmm. different workshops and yeah. VPI. Yeah, and we all work together uh, yeah. wonderfully. But um, and after that, you have two options. So one, we can just look for a job in the field that you want, especially if you come with a past experience in a certain position. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, opportunity is um, a 14 week paid placement. Oh, nice. That way mm -hmm. it gives the person a chance to kind of get in there, see if they like it. Mm -hmm see what they can learn, and then they can move on from there. But yeah, you have those two options, which work really well. I find the placement opportunity works well with the individuals that don't have uh, a lot of uh, work experience. Mm -hmm. So they just want to kind of build a little bit more before getting into something that they want. But um, yeah, that's basically the training, 10 weeks of training, 14 weeks of um, uh, placement experience, or just getting a job and moving forward with your career. So would your job entail finding the placements for, for these clients? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we usually have one-on-one -on -one meetings with everybody where we uh -huh. review their needs. We review their resumes. We review, and we always talk about like, what job do you want to do? What job do you uh -huh. love to do? Yeah. That's one of the questions. And if there's jobs that, you know, there's jobs that require a lot of certifications. We have clients that want to be social worker, right? Okay. But they didn't go to school yet, but maybe we can get a job where they're uh, assisting somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. at least get their foot in so they can see what it looks like. And if they want to go back to school and take that program, that's up to them. Yeah. Um, coming from Moha College, I know that they have a lot of accommodations too for individuals with disabilities when they mm -hmm. go to school and take those programs. So yeah, and then I just connect with everybody and I help them with their resumes. I call the employers, I email the employers and just advocate for our client and tell the employers what a wonderful client clients we have and just kind of talk about their skills and, and abilities. 
That's awesome. So it sounds like you're you're very passionate about it, and you would it would be a pleasure to have you as a job uh, counselor and uh, job developer. Developer, is there anything um, any other advice you would give uh, folks out there that are thinking about getting into this this field of work? Well, like I said earlier, if you really want to get into any field that you're yeah. you know kind of contemplating what to get into, um, research. Mm -hmm. research the field research if you look at the i would also look at job postings yeah look at job postings yeah. see yeah. if this is something you want to yeah you want to go into um just really uh look into what career you want to go into because it's 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 career you want to keep for many years right so mm -hmm. you want to be comfortable in that job and you want to be happy and the more you're happy and the more you're passionate it comes mm -hmm. across when you're helping your clients right so um, so yeah, and, and my advice to is just to encourage everybody uh, to stay strong, especially during these times, stay positive. And it's sometimes it's easier said than done to stay positive. But I mean, that's the one choice that we have, because otherwise, you don't want to go into the negative side of things, right? Mm -hmm. So staying positive, keep working hard. I know it's hard to apply for some jobs, especially um, a lot of them have moved online. Right. A lot yeah, of the job applications, yeah. different, a different whole way of job seeking. It's yep. not the same as it used to be. Yeah, yep. I've helped clients fill out job applications, online job. And there was a hundred questions mm -hmm. on there. So we had to go through everything. So it's a little bit difficult, but you know what? You have people like myself and mm -hmm. uh, people from uh, Path Employment and mm -hmm. and uh, VPI. Right. So everybody can help each other. And um just kind of keep going and working hard and perfecting resumes. And one suggestion I would make too is if you find that you're not finding the right job at this time, look for training, look for upgrading your computer skills, look for getting different certifications because that mm. looks so good on your resume, yep. especially when you're saying out oh, through the pandemic, I did training, mm -hmm. I, you know, yep extra education, right? I got the certification. So the employer knows that even through difficult times, you were able to work hard and just keep going. And of course, just stay safe, right? Staying safe around these times. And um, yeah, and then you know what? And I want to thank you, Catherine, because uh, jo a job position like mine, uh, I get the opportunity to meet individuals like yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, which is so great. So and uh, one more thing, Networking, networking, networking yeah. would be the most, I, we keep saying that I think everywhere, but networking is so great. Building your LinkedIn profile, people with disability, uh, looking into your discoverability network, right? Mm -hmm. Creating an account there. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of things that um, uh, we can suggest to our clients, but um, just kind of keep going and, and work hard and put in your resumes. And one day that amazing employer will see everything uh, all your skills and abilities, and yep. hopefully it'll be a match made in heaven. Yeah, and and you'll have a team like uh, like all of us behind you, hopefully supporting you, and uh, and it'll be successful. That's awesome. Yep. Yep. Anything else you want to share, uh, Evelyn? Anything that's happening? The why or? <laughs> um, well, we have the, still our programs running. We have our STEM mm -hmm. program that's running for youth. We have our um, newcomers program, the joint program. Mm -hmm. We also have the WEC program, which is the uh, uh, for women entrepreneurs. Amazing program there, too. Um, so, yeah, I would suggest go into the website, look into the programs we offer, and also look at for job opportunities. There's yeah. always ongoing job opportunities there. So look into that for sure. Awesome. That's yeah. great. Well, thank you so much, Evelyn. It was lovely seeing you again virtually, and I will see you again virtually soon, I know. And uh, thank you for sharing your career journey and uh, talking to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine, for this experience. Thank you. I appreciate it. You too. Thank you.